Welcome to our discussion on bivariate data. So when we're measuring two variables on each experimental unit, the resulting data is called bivariate data. Big fancy word for saying two measurements on each thing. Um, you've seen this before. This is very common. Anytime you see correlation, that's bivariate data, right? If you're measuring twice on one thing, like a pretest and a post-test, you're getting bivariate data. If you measured everybody's height and weight, right, and then tried to see if there was a correlation between the two, that would be bivariate data. So you're usually trying to um, find a relationship between the two variables when you do bivariate data, but not always. So the types of graphs we use would be um, scatter plots, right? Numerical measures would be correlation regression. So when at least one of the variables is qualitative, you can use a comparative pie chart or bar chart. So for instance, variable one, variable two for this, right? We've got, do you think that men and women are treated equally in the workplace? And you're just basically asking them their opinions, yes and no. So you can see that that's qualitative data, you know, it's not numerical. So you could just put it in a pie chart to show kind of the ratios or percentages for each option, agree, disagree, or no opinion. Okay, comparative bar charts, you can stack the things on top of them. I personally don't think these are as good as the pie charts, but these are used a lot. The idea is that the first gray bar is the women's responses, right? And then the red bar is the men's. So you can kind of see how the groups are going. And then the side-by-side -side bar chart does the same thing. I think side-by-side -side is better than stacked, but again, it's personal preference. So you can tell from both that more women than men feel that they are not treated equally in the workplace. Okay, when both of the variables are quantitative, i.e. measurable numbers, right? Then you can call one variable X, the other Y, and then you get a single measurement on each, you know, each unit has two measurements and those two things can be paired together as an X, Y comes from an ordered pair. And then you can graph those on the Cartesian plane and you get a scatter plot. And then you can start looking for patterns, right? Linear or, or uh, quadratic or curve or whatever, but you can look for a relationship between them. So you can see that when x equals 2 and y equals 5, there's your point 2, 5. So we want to look for a pattern, right? Look for a straight line or a curve or no pattern at all. We want to see how strong or weak the pattern is, i.e. how tight together the um, correlation is. So you can see that's a pretty good tight pattern. Yeah, maybe a curved pattern here, but pretty weak. And these are just all over the place. These are all over the place. So there's really nothing going on there. I guess you could see kind of a negative, but I don't buy that. <clears throat> Curvilinear, right? Kind of like this, bit of a curve. And then no relationship. Okay, numerical measures. The strength and direction of the relationship are basically the two things we can measure. So you've got the correlation coefficient R, which gives you the strength and the direction, right? If it's positive, we know it's positive. If it's negative, we know it slopes down. This is basically how you come up with those computations. You don't have to worry about that, right? The, uh, any kind of technology you have does all this for you. Here's a simple example. So um, living area and sale price. So you want to see if there's a relationship. You can see the bigger the house, the more it sells for. That kind of makes sense. Scatter plot obviously indicates a positive linear relationship because it's more or less a straight line in a positive direction. These two are kind of off the mark by a little bit. So then you take your number, you calculate a bunch of stuff, you calculate a bunch more stuff, 
calculate even a bunch more stuff, and you finally come up with r of 0.885. That's your linear correlation coefficient. Remember, you're looking for things where the absolute value is closest to 1, right? So a negative 0.885 is just as strong as a positive 0.885. It just means you have a negative relationship. So 0.885 is pretty good. So close to 0, weak. Close to 1 or my, negative 1, pretty good. Equal to negative 1 or, or 1, almost never happens, uh, means that you have a perfect linear correlation, or a perfect correlation. Right? This, say you get the same R if you do a curved correlation, right? if you try and fit it to a quadratic or anything else. So sometimes these two measurements um, are, have a strong enough R already. We know there's a relationship that we can call them the dependent and independent variable. And then we can try and predict one based on the other. And we get this regression line where we can make these kind of predictions. A is your y-intercept. B is your slope. So to find it, again, pretty simple um, techniques from before. But technology does it for you. There's your regression line. So that's your prediction line. And you can... Do it all yourself if you want to. The idea is that if someone gives you an input of x, remember in this case uh, the size of a house, you can predict what the sale price should be. So here are the key concepts we learned in this one. Right, We can do bivariate data, whether it's qualitative or quantitative. Um, it describes each variable separately. We can describe the relationship between the variables. Um, if we have two qualitative variables, we can do the side-by-side -side pie charts, probably the best. Uh, comparative line charts, eh, not so good. Comparative bar charts are okay. I think the side-by-side -side is better than the stack, but again, it's per personal preference. Um, you can also do relative frequencies to describe the relationship between the two variables, and, and that's you know kind of what you get from the pie charts. Um, if you have two quantitative variables, the, the better ones, right? There's all sorts of stuff we can do. Scatter plots, look for a pattern, see how strong it is, look for unusual kind of outliers and clusters. Um, we can compute covariance and the correlation coefficient, you know, how strong are they? We can do a best fitting line, whether it's a straight line or a curved line. Then we can make predictions, all sorts of yummy stuff we can do with quantitative data. So that's why we like quantitative better. And that's everything we need to know about bivariate data.